Discussion keeps the world turning. This is Round Table. We're living in the age of artificial intelligence, or AI, where even ultra-short dramas are getting swept into the mix. Now, entire series, everything from the visuals to the plot twists, are crafted by AI. Could feature films be next? Is the future of entertainment already in AI's hands? And we're on a mission of starting your week with a motivational kick. Our Motivational Monday offerings will get you ready to tackle the week. Coming to you live from Beijing, this is Roundtable. I'm He Young. For today's program, I'm joined by Steve Hatherly and Yu Shun in the studio. First on today's show. Ultra short dramas with their bite-sized episodes, fast pace, and over-the-top storylines are taking over short video platforms, both at home and abroad. And now, thanks to AI, everything from the visuals to the voiceovers, even the plot, can be AI generated. So theoretically, what used to take a whole team of professionals, scriptwriters, animators, a lightning crews, actors, and so on, can now be handled by just one person with AI at hand. But what does this mean for the industry and its viewers? Yushun, let's go to you first.、Mm-hmm. What AI-generated ultra-short shows are grabbing eyeballs? Yeah, so basically,、uh, we know the short video platform Stoyin and Kui Show both launched two AI-generated. Generated ultra short dramas, and Douyin and Kui Show are the two giants in short、uh, in China's short video market. So these are apps that you download onto your、uh, device, smartphone. Yeah, and then specifically for short videos. Yes. Okay, got it.、Mm-hmm. And then you can watch these kind of ultra short dramas on these platforms, and they're basically they're as huge as、um, taking up fifty four. Percent of the whole market share of the short video platforms, and also more specifically, when we're talking about these two ultra short dramas, Kui Shou's "The Mirror of Mountains and Seas," "Breaking Waves," or in Chinese, "Shanghai Qijing Zhi," "Pi Bo Zhan Lang." Well, sounds very fascinating. Is a new five episode ultra short drama with each episode running just three minutes, and this is a drama with. Protagonist, a setting, a story showcasing many unique and rare creatures, and every element from the script and the dialogue to the、mm-hmm. storyboard and the special effects and the soundtrack. Even the soundtrack、yeah. was crafted by advanced AI.、Mm-hmm. This is really an amazing. Thing that AI is able to accomplish, positives and negatives. I think we'll probably get into it a little bit, but、mm-hmm. simply based on the fact that they can do it,、mm-hmm. they can create everything now using AI. It's pretty、mm-hmm. impressive. Also, both of you have had a quick look on these、uh, short videos, ultra shorts, because they're shorter than the short videos.、Mm-hmm. Are they any good? The trailers are almost as long as the episodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, yes.、Um, I watched the trailer for the Mirror of Mountains and Seas Breaking Waves. And it's really cool. For a moment in the trailer, I felt like, from a Western perspective, if you will, I felt like I was watching the trailer for Avatar、mm-hmm. a little bit, minus the live action element of it, because the people in the trailer, my goodness, they looked. I mean, I thought I was looking at a human being, but、mm-hmm. it's not. It's an it's an AI generated character,、mm-hmm. and the whole thing is just really impressive.、Mm-hmm. the The way it looks, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's exciting. You have monsters and people in there. It's all it's all really cool looking. Yeah. Also, and and the other one that we were talking about was、uh, Douyin. Also, co-、uh, cooperated with Buona Film Group, which is a top distributor and producer in China. And they、uh, actually also released this San Xingdui Revolution of the Future or San Xingdui Weilai Qi Shi Lu. It is a, a historical cultural relic site, and、um, that the, the whole story is about、um, you know ir- ir- reflecting a bunch of、um, rare creatures and everything. I also watched some of these trailers, so. I, I, actually, I think is quite stunning, you know,、mm. by the fact that all of these creatures and the special effects that they get, and I also think it inherits some of the characteristics of short videos because they can always grab your eyes by using all of these words or these、um, special effects.、Uh, one title, one video title is a young boy sets sail and finds a mysterious wonderland, only to unwittingly invite disasters. 
by you know looking at this title, I would clicking and watch mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. Visually, they are quite stunning. And the we talked about the soundtrack too. The AI does the soundtrack. It sound it sounds really cool. The soundscape is impressive too. Right. And let's just、uh, give everybody a better understanding of the ultra short drama、mm. that is center stage here. And how is that different from the short video platforms and offerings that I suppose, unless you're disconnected to the internet, then everybody should know.、Mm. So I think the big difference is at the word drama, right?、Um, we watch all the all of these dramas with、um, the same story lines, the plots. While when we were watching just some of these、uh, short videos, it is just a simple and single video. Yeah, they so, are standalone、mm. for the most part, right? Yeah. But these ultra short dramas, yeah, they're very short, a couple of minutes in length, and、uh, the difference, I guess, comparing them to other short videos, is that they have episodes, right? It's a、mm. continuing storyline, and the episodes can vary from short drama to short drama. Sometimes you can find them in the dozens, but sometimes there can be over a hundred episodes. Yes.、Um, so that would be a big difference too. Right, and ultra short dramas have been all the rage in the video world in the last couple of years. I remember when we first talked about it on our show, we were all. Astounded、mm. by how cheesy the title as well as the content can be, such as my domineering husband、mm. happens to be a billionaire at the、yeah. same time, and he's also very good looking and treats me really well. <laughs> <Right> . <laughs> so stuff like that. But now, a couple of years later, like tell us how popular it's been, and、mm. has this become sort of one of the staples of our short video feeds?、Mm. I think with all of these development, we kind of had that kind of、um, impression on ultra short that back then. Because as Keyang you said, maybe when we're talking about ultra short, we're thinking of all of these cheesy plots <laughs> with all of these werewolves and em-、uh, vampires. But、uh, this one that we're going to talk about, the AI-generated ultra short dramas, I think they mainly have the concept of short, but they are、um, more or less these kind of、um, you know、uh, plot leaded,、um, pl- plot led,、um, mysterious stories. And also when we are seeing the stats of how popular these ultra short videos could be. According to a new report published by the China Internet Network Information Center, a gov- which is a government-affiliated research institute,、uh, China's number of internet users grew to nearly 1.1 billion in the first half of 2024, while more than 50 per- percent of Chinese internet users had watched. An ultra short drama, wow, which、mm. is about five hundred million. <laughs> That's a lot of people tuning into these shows.、Mm. Yeah. I was reading、uh, a snippet of an interview、um, from a man who had worked in the、uh, Chinese entertainment industry for a long time, and he was talking about how perhaps when these plot lines began. You had stories like time travel. You had stories about the transformation of an ordinary and timid、mm-hmm. man who、yeah. suddenly is, you know, grown into some big strong man or seeking revenge and becoming a business tycoon. All of these typical plot lines that existed in the past with AI now,、mm. the directors and the producers they don't need to follow those typical plot lines anymore because with AI, the creators. I mean, the sky is the limit. There are really no rules. They can create whatever type of story they want to, and I think that probably adds to the popularity of them as well. Also, just quick question for you, Steve. You're our in-house international observer, I suppose.、Um, so, is ultra short something that you'd see on TikTok or on, you know, in the global?、Um, Video sphere. I think it's a new realm,、um, something that didn't really exist before. But this idea of short videos is becoming popular in the United States.、Uh, Real short. Have、mm, you heard of it、yes. before?、Mm-hmm. I downloaded it onto my phone、yeah. er- earlier today, as a matter of fact, and I was、Have、trying to watch some of these series. I couldn't get it to connect right away, so、uh-huh. I, I was going to check it out a little bit later. But Real Short, which is a Chinese short drama application, it. Outperformed TikTok in downloads across the United.
United States last November. Um, it amassed about 19 million global downloads across all different platforms in 2023, and it made a lot of money too. Mm-hmm. It made 22 over 22 million in revenue. So that answers your question. This is becoming a global a global thing. Mm, and this is one of those new territories where we could see more growth, and a lot of people are excited to get on board, so to speak. And how does AI craft ultra shorts? Mm. What are the benefits of AI in this creation process? I think the first one I, I, I can think of is the efficiency that these AI can bring to the producers of all of these ultra short videos or dramas. You know, you know, content that is you know, difficult to film in the real world can be more easily achieved through these AI GC, um, such as you know science fiction or ancient mythology, because we can see the examples that we list this uh, above or previously are these kind of mysterious uh, creatures that you can never imagine with all of these wings and um, uh, superpowers. So with uh, the power of AI, then we can see it is easily to showcase just by clicking in some prompt words or prompt sentences, and then you can have all of these marvelous yeah. scenes. That's one, yeah, creativity, right? At the fingertips of the creators. Mm. But there's other benefits as well. Uh, Chen Kun, if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, he was the producer in charge of the drama that we're talking about. And this is his quote. Featuring grand battle scenes that required extensive rendering and special effects, AI slashed our production time and costs by more than 75%. And what used to take up to six months, we accomplished in just two so the creators can save a whole lot of time Mm. in the studio and they can uh, save a whole lot of money as Mm. well Mm -hmm. and also just uh, think of this as a viewer and as a creator now i suppose for viewers you can become creators it's Mm. almost like this is great because um, anyone can now express their creativity visually, breaking down barriers and making storytelling more accessible to anyone. What used to be only trained professionals can do is something now you can produce if you have a good story in your mind or even if you want some inspiration from AI to get a good storyline, you can do that. But of course, on the flip side, this is going to have an impact. Big or super big on those industry practitioners, those who are already working in the um, film, short video, Mm. long video Mm. industry. So do you think that AI can truly replace human professionals in writing scripts, uh, creating visuals, and the whole shebang of video making? Yeah, there is a lot of criticism about AI in the entertainment industry already. Critics will will uh, argue that the content generated by AI, it doesn't have that, how shall we say, emotional depth mm. or the subtle details of traditional filmmaking as well. Um, the visual effects, they say, can sometimes feel quite cold, quite mechanical mm. at times too. Um, suspension of disbelief, if you're familiar with that term, that when you're watching a movie, you get so so into it that you forget that you're watching a movie. But with AI-created content, it's always at the forefront of your mind, or you get reminded sometimes, oh, oh yeah, right, this was created by AI. And that's one of the criticisms. Yes, I, I and think. also, I think uh, I saw some of the comments on these kind of videos saying that uh, scenes and visuals may often may be often disjointed and lacking realism critics also say that they look like powerpoint animation mm. they're just like <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah they they're pictures but they're moving mm. it's more likely how ai can generate because um of course they are very astonishing but um when we are seeing all of these expressions or more specifically a human 
uh, emotion. I mm-hmm. think that could be very hard for AI to actually generate a really, you know, live action of a human. Which mm-hmm. is why AI is unlikely uh, to mm-hmm. fully, re- fully replace mm-hmm. actors, human performers. We talked about it: the emotional aspect of film and shows and acting, um, the expressions, the improvisation, the creative interaction. That's still something that AI struggles to replicate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, but also we've seen some of the demo videos out there, which show. It can be visually striking mm. what AI can do, and also it feels like it's just a matter of time before it gets better. Yes, and also I'd like to um, sort of direct our attention a little bit more towards the creative process. Now with these ultra short videos, apparently one talking point is that a lot of these stories are developed by AI. Mm. So it's not like you've got a script writer. Um, Spending days thinking about, oh, how should this story develop now? That's all AI too, and by the look of it, people are are really protesting, saying this is not very good. It aren't aren't doing that. It's still it's still computer generated content, though. Do you remember a few was it a few years ago now when we saw paintings that were created by AI? Yes, they're good, but it didn't really grab uh, grab on because people still like to know that art was created by other human beings there's an extra level of enjoyment there and if the art is created paintings or music ai can create mm. music now as well do people still enjoy it as much i i i would argue no mm. th- no they probably don't mm. short these short dramas are really cool it's a new thing um that everybody's getting really excited about but are we simply going to get rid of all human directors and actors and things like this? I, I don't see that coming in the future. Yeah, and on, also I think it is a kind of common issue that may appear when AI is getting into some creative uh, field. When we are seeing how AI is generating these content, of course they are still um, producing by the content they that human fed them. So basically they are still um, giving you the content that you actually have, mm-hmm. and then they are not originally creating something, but they are just, um, you know, collapsing everything and then rearrange these things. Mm-hmm. So I think that is the um, result that people may get, and maybe from time to time or after a period of time, then human may get tired of all of the content that they have already seen. Mm-hmm. I like to um, sort of support or offer a footnote to what, Steve, you mentioned just now about, I think it's an interesting concept that how much effort is put into art or the work actually affects the viewer or the receiver of it. Um, There's something about art that means that human beings are more affected the more effort that they know has gone into things. For example, if I were to show you a statue of Rodin's The Kiss, knowing that it was sculpted over time, well, what time and who did it, you'd be more moved by it Mm. than if it were cut out by a laser blade, (laughs) 3D printer, by a computer, (laughs) an AI. And even if it was just exactly the same sculpture, um, true human effort, I think, still moves us on a different level. And that's something that I still sort of cherish and I hold on to this thought because I think it's true now. Mm -hmm. But in the future, actually, I would like it to be true, but I don't know. Especially nowadays with these videos, we know that they're AI generated. And then I suppose um, it can't fool the human eye. But Mm. in the future, let's say... And I have my gut feeling tells me that this is going to happen. We're going to increasingly come over across um, videos, these products that doesn't label as AI generated. Mm. And then if it gets much better. And And it will probably. It will. It's getting better every month by the day, by the sound of it. Then how are we going to? receive and conceive these things Mm. that actually reminds me of a point that i when i was watching one of these trailers of the ultra short ai generated ultra short videos Mm. so the first shot of this trailer i saw for an ai um uh, generated features a big city that feels like a real existing urban landscape 
um, and it has many familiar elements like the skyscrapers. Um, but you can quite tell which city it is. It's just so real, but you cannot tell. Mm. So is that a good thing? Or when we're discussing something like, um, could could it be just more realistic, the better? Mm. Or we just should know that it is AI generated. Do we even need it to be ultra realistic? I'm thinking of cartoons mm -hmm. right now children's cartoons or animated series like the simpsons for example mm. we know it's not real homer simpson is not a real person no. and we're okay with that the simpsons has been on air for decades and we like it but we don't we don't need it to be ultra real mm. so we're headed in the direction of ai created content and it seems like the creators want to convince us oh look how realistic this mm -hmm. is wow look how realistic this is but i'm not sure that that's something that people want mm -hmm. or need for their entertainment value mm, that's a very good point and also maybe this is why that we see ai is most used in these ultra short videos with the um with the themes of pretty fanat uh, fanatical uh, f sorry, fantastical content. So we're talking about, you know, all these like fantasy stories and when it's really difficult to sort of create, you know, use all that computer rendering or or create a set to to tell these uh, alf almost like um, mythological stories. Nice. So but so this area, AI is great. But if it's ultra real, then, you know, it's still really easy to tell, okay, that doesn't work. That's AI. That's computer. Mm. That's not not human beings. But uh, if I may make a slightly snarky comment on what uh, you shouldn't allude it to just now about, oh, the cities look the same mm -hmm. in these videos. Um, one could argue that just go to any um, second tier Chinese city or these uh, cities that have been developed in the last 10, 20 years you could argue that they look the same they're generic and because you know with this fast development of cities and then you know having that character having that something special sauce to your place that becomes increasingly difficult mm. to spot as well and um, this may offer um, <laughs> urban planners to think about this again <laughs> <laughs> maybe AI will be creating our cities in the future oh yeah um, you know AI isn't new um, it's not only in front of the camera where we see it, it's behind the camera as well. It's being used in so many different areas. In, in Hollywood, for example, it's being used in pre-production. And some of these are just such, such a good use of AI. In pre-production, the algorithms can analyze scripts and then they can provide insights on various aspects like location scouting, for example, or costume choices or mm. set designs. The AI can assist directors in that. Um, IBM's Watson AI, for example, was used in the production of the movie Morgan. I'm not sure if you know that or not. But anyway, they it analyzed thousands of horror movie trailers uh -huh. to generate a trailer for the film. And the reason they used the AI algorithm for that is because it would uh, grab all the key elements that really resonated with audiences mm -hmm. to create a perfect trailer mm. for a film. That's a really smart use of AI too. Mm. And when we're talking about, you know, AI's impact on people's jobs and, you know, those who are actually working in this profession, today we're talking about video entertainment as such, but I well, I have a, a little bit of an ambivalent feeling towards this cuz to some extent I think AI can can do so much and it can replace a lot of jobs in the sense that most people don't necessarily need, let's say, Bordeaux vintage wines from two, the, the year 2000, which happened to be a very good year for wine production in France. We are probably happy enough for most of us when we're waiting to get into the subway or sitting on the toilet bowl or whatever case scenario you're in watching these videos that we just want like a, a can of iced Coke, so to speak. Mm. We So that mediocre, run-of-the-mill, pretty fancy to the eye at first glance stuff is good enough. Mm -hmm. And then and then maybe 
So maybe there is plenty of room for this kind of AI generated content in the market. Yeah. What if they had said when they had black and white TV, this is good enough? Hmm. What if before the wheel they said this is good enough? <laughs> we don't need <laughs> we don't need to roll things. We don't need cars. What if the Wright brothers said Eh, you know, being on the ground is good enough. We wouldn't be flying now. So we're always pushing forward as human beings. And how far will this go? We don't know just yet. Right. And my worry here is that mediocre stuff generated by AI, which is pretty much the safe option, that will flood the market. And for the really hardworking, painstakingly difficult stuff that people put their soul and heart into, will there still be a place for them to make money and survive? 